Good day, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, May 20. A meteorological drought has not yet been declared for Jamaica, but the government is still taking steps to help farmers weather the current dry spell. Agriculture Minister Derek Kelly made the announcement in Parliament this Tuesday. We all pray for more rains, but while we pray, we are ensuring through these initiatives that crops on the ground can be safeguarded. Initiatives include the trucking of over 400 loads of water to farmers in the most affected areas starting this week. It's part of a $10 million intervention by the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, which includes providing farmers with nearly 300 650 gallon water tanks. This will complement the over 30 million that we have already allocated earlier this year to provide inputs to farmers island wide under the productive in production incentive program. Under the Rural Economic Development Initiative Ready Project, another 190 drip irrigation kits will be provided to farmers by the end of this month. Ready is also spending $14.4 million to implement drip irrigation and fertigation systems on 30 acres of land at Braco in Trelawney and plant in Garden River in St. Thomas. Progress is being made on plans to set up a National Dental Examination Board which will ensure the highest quality dental exams in Jamaica. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson says this is being achieved through collaboration with the American Dental Examination Body ADEX and the Northeast Regional Examination Board. He says Jamaica is the first country outside mainland USA to become a member of ADEX. This means that some of our graduates will be able to practice in the United States and we can begin to look at options regarding training for export. Dr. Ferguson says he will be meeting with the Ministry of Education along with the leadership of the Universities of the West Indies and Technology to resolve challenges that are impacting the oral health training program. Deepening regional travel is high on the agenda at a World Tourism Organization meeting being attended by Portfolio Minister Dr. Wicker McNeil. The Tourism Minister is moderating the panel discussion on the issue at an international seminar being held in Haiti. He is also participating in the 58th meeting of the World Tourism Organization Commission for the Americas. Both events are jointly organized by the Haitian government and the UNWTO and include regional tourism leaders from countries such as Cuba, Colombia, Paraguay and Guatemala. Seven Jamaican dancers have been offered scholarships as a result of government's 2015 Arts in the Park event on Sunday. The scholarships are to attend the American-based Martha Graham School of Contemporary Dance. Arts in the Park is designed to expose local acts to the global arena while moving towards monetizing the creative industry. This year's event was dubbed the Dance Edition. Dance is not new to us as an action but it's new to us as a business. Not many of us have taken it as a business. And so what we're trying to show is that all the talents that we have have value in the market. And once a product has value in the market, it can become a business. And um, we have taken some persons who have made a lot of money from dancing to show us the way and to become intermediaries for us. More than 30 Jamaican dance pieces were shown to international dance coaches and scouts at Sunday's staging of Arts in the Park. It was the fourth staging of the initiative with the first installment focused on music. The second showcased the spoken word and the third zeroed in on gospel music. Central Branch All Age in Kingston is the most recent school to get an enrichment center as part of a program to improve literacy rates in primary schools. It was established through a partnership involving the Education Ministry, Digicel Foundation, and the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. Through the enrichment centers, underperforming students in grades 1 to 3 benefit from individualized instruction and technology. Nobody can take away the skills and the competences that they will get from the enrichment room experience. And finally, yet another call is being made for persons to actively protect the rights of Jamaica's children. Industry Investment and Commerce State Minister Sharon Fox Abrams asserts that persons who know or suspect that a child is being abused and do not report the incident are also guilty. She was addressing a recent Human Rights and the Rights of the Child seminar for early childhood teachers in St. James. We have to step out and protect our children. We cannot just sit by. Are not just children, anything we see going on, we need to be able to speak out against it. Find a safe way to report it. Find a safe way to tell somebody. And that's it for GIS News today. I'm Tamar McHale. 
Thank you for watching.